They're selling little thousand illegal wildlife trade. What can we do about it? I was a wildlife ranger working with the wildlife department Pahilitan for more than 10 years. Jungle is like my home. Sometimes I feel my actual home is like a second home where I just put my things. It's like a storeroom because I constantly being in the jungle. I be, I'm barely be at home more than 10 days a month. I really enjoyed being in the jungle and every time I go to the jungle, I kept on looking for my Tarzan. You know Tarzan and Jane, their famous movie? So instead of finding Tarzan, I found my little Tarzan and it was like a dream and so much more. My name is Mariani Ramli or BAM. I rehabilitate gibbons. So you may wonder, what is gibbons? Gibbons are majestic apes. They walk on two feet on branches and they are so fast. Even when we run on the ground, we can't beat them. They are the swingers of the jungle because they swing on trees. Every time they swing, they can go more than 40 feet. They are so fast. They also sing mesmerizing songs. But it's a, it's a bit frustrating because every time they sing, they hide their faces. You make you wonder who is the owner of this beautiful voice. But you can hear them kilometers away. Other than doing my routine in the jungle, wildlife inventory, catching poachers, the actual highlight for my trips are looking for my little Tarzan. Growing up as an avid animal lover, I used to live with animals. Roosters, snakes, otters, chivets, frogs. I even slept alongside with them. To be honest, I misinterpreted the animal shows on TV, Animal Planet, National Geographic. I even jealous with keepers at zoos or animal parks. Every time I see them handle the animals, I will also want to do the same. Having animals at my home so I can handle them every time. I spend most of my time with animals because I'm interested more with animals than my family and friends. I feel like they have a therapeutic power that can make me feel calm. That is why I started with the wildlife department 2007 because I believe there are many people like me out there. Zoophiles that cannot live without animals in their life. My work with gibbon conservation didn't start until I met Alec while I was working with the wildlife department. I remember one fine day where I went to the one of our wildlife rescue center up north in Peninsula, Malaysia. I saw a tiny baby sitting at the corner in a small cage. Looking at him had drawn me to approach him. I walk closer to him and try to gain his trust. The moment he touched my hand and allowed me to lift him, I feel the connection. The connection that I never feel before. I spend lots of time with him and then I realize my visit to the center becoming more often because I, I just want to see him. I feel bad every time I want to go back because he will start crying. And then even the keeper at the center tell me, told me that he would look for me and cry if I'm not around. Feeling bad, I plan to bring him home with me so I can spend, so I can take a full care of him. So I wrote a proposal to the department and I volunteered myself to become his caretaker. I named him Alec. After living with him, we could not be separated. I share most of my time, my money to buy him toys, foods and everything. I love him so much. As time passed, I got to know more about Alex's history. Actually, he was surrounded by a man that found him on the forest floor hugging his dead mother. His family been killed. The man pulled him from the cold body and brought him to the rescue center. Knowing this story made me love him so much more. As he grew older, I realized my house is not big enough. Every day, my house is like a hurricane went through. He even swung on my curtains. But I wonder why he still doesn't make him happy. So I started to read about Alec to know more because I don't know in enough about his species. Being in the department for six years that time, I still don't know what is Gibbons. So I contacted Gibbons experts all over the world. I found out that Alec is the king of breakation. He is the fastest primates in the world. He's the only primates that can sing. And we even shared 
96% DNA with him. This had made me like really proud to have him and I becoming more protective of Alec because he's actually the elusive Tarzan that I'm looking for for all this while. As I dug for more information, I found out in Malaysia, gibbons is one of the popular species for the illegal wildlife trade that been advertised in social media platform, WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, WeChat. Gibbon is an endangered species listed in the IUCN Red List. They are also one of the popular species that have been demand for wildlife pet trade. My little Alec, the king of vacation, the swingers of the jungle, the only singing primate, is actually the victim of illegal wildlife trade. I feel disgusted by our fellow humans. This cruelty has to stop now and the driver for this demand still poorly understood or understudied. The exotic animal lover, the more rare the species that they have, the cooler they will look and the more different they are from the others. I continue studying to look for a place, the right place for Alec. I feel responsible to send him back to the wild, to the place where he belongs, so he can have his own family, so he can help at the Gibbons population in Malaysia. As I continue doing my research, I found out the word rehabilitation, and it wasn't take me long to find out that actually Malaysia doesn't have a single Gibbon rehabilitation project. Falling in love with Alec had changed me a lot. He had taught me how to become a researcher. I understand more about his species, about wildlife trade, rehabilitation, conservation, wildlife management overall, and how to help the animals in the right way. I'm a bit too late with my research when I found out that my little Tarzan had contracted bacterial infection and Alec left me less than a year after being with me. I felt so traumatized. I keep on blaming myself. Why can I do research earlier so I can save him? Everything that reminds me of him, the jungle, the places that we went together, the car, his favorite toys, the food, really breaks my heart. I don't even want to go back. I don't want to go to the same bed. Where he actually... Um, where he actually took his, his last breath on my chest. I remember the, the last breath and then his warm body slowly become cold. So I decided no more gibbons in my life. Few months after Alec died, someone called me with a gibbon. He wanted to surrender his gibbon to me. Without even thinking twice, I said no. But this man back and asked at least for an advice. So I thought I will give him a chance. At least he can have something from the research that I made. And I don't want him to make the same mistake that I did. So I drove almost four hours to his place and when I arrived, he took me to the back of his house and there I saw a thin body inside a small cage. I approached that cage. It's a smelly, filthy, starving gibbon being surrounded by flies. He keep on self-rocking back and forth. He even pull his own hair, he even bite his own hand. My tears fell and I named him Daru. This man told me that Daru was his kid's best friend. But as, Tad as Daru grew older, he started to play rough and play bite. So 
Daru actually harm his kids because of the wild instinct. He actually abandoned Daru in the jungle because he if he was afraid, afraid of being bitten. He put Daru in the rice sack, brought him in the middle of the jungle, loosened the tide so he have time to run away back home. While Daru tried to escape, after just two days, Daru is right in front in front of his home, with the fungus on his body, starving. Daru is just a juvenile. He don't know how to survive in the wild. That is why he tried his be his best to find his human, his owner. He didn't know what to do. The owner didn't know what to do with Daru. Having no function to the family anymore, he kept Daru in this small cage, and slowly his welfare been forgotten. The time I got Daru, he's in a horrible mental state. Then I continue learning again about gibbons. After that, I got the second gibbons, the third gibbons, and the sixth gibbons. I realized I need to focus more on gibbons. Then I step out from the wildlife department, and I started the first Malaysian gibbon rehabilitation project. The cruelty of wildlife trade didn't just start when they was in our hand. It happens before, and after surrender and confiscation. It didn't stop there. They need to go vigorous years of rehabilitation, but rehabilitation is not a solution for the whole problem. This has to stop now. We need to stop the cruelty. Having an exotic animal doesn't make you an animal lover. It makes you an animal killer. The poachers will aim for the baby because they are easily tamed. Then sometimes the baby will die because of the trauma. Been separated with the family. Sometimes the baby been kidnapped from their mothers, from their family. So if this, when this baby died, the poacher will go for another family, and this vicious cycles will keep on repeating because of the demand, because of our demand for having wildlife as pet. When we have gibbons, we put them in a small cage. They can't even swing. Their muscle deteriorate. We gave them food that we thought they like. Because every time we give, they will finish the food, but actually they don't have choices like they did in the wild. They will become malnourished. Like example, we have a snack pet. We gave them fake environment, fake UV light, a bird. We catch them, put a fake branch so they can perch. They will not be able to fly, and they just can can flap their wings. They will slowly demotivated to live. Then, when they start become rough, bigger, what we do? Abandon them, leave them in the jungle. They will not be able to survive. Like a human child, you need to teach them how to take care of themselves. A wildlife, a hand raised wildlife, will not be able to live in the jungle without a proper rehabilitation, because we. Taught them how to be a good pet, how to be a human, and not how to survive in the wild. For gibbons, more than 90% of them will just die if we left them in the jungle without proper rehabilitation. When we leave them in the jungle, they will feel scared, terrified, and they will struggle to find food and live for another day. If we look at this in the bigger picture, it's just a common sense. We should never took. A wildlife away from their habitat. Our life, our environment is a torture for their mental. I may use gibbons as my example, but these things happens to other wildlife species too. Remember, suffering didn't start when they are in our hands. It already started during the poaching. It too will not end after confiscation or surrender. They need to go through vigorous years of rehabilitation process. To make sure they can survive once they've been released into the wild, I really hope there will be no second elect. Never demand to have wildlife as pet, so these animals will never be taken out from their family, from their home. We need to stop the demand so we all together can stop the trend. If you really love animals, help the strays, dogs and cats. Love them. If you see someone selling or having wildlife as pets, 
take pictures, videos, and send it to the authority. Educate your friends and family. Your five minutes of sharing will save lives in the jungle. For the exotic wildlife owner, to love is to let go. Give them freedom that they deserve. We should appreciate them in the wild, respect them to express their natural behavior. Oh, Alec, conservation is really challenging. Yet, it's such a beautiful thing to do. As I promise you, I will continue until the rest of my life. Spread the awareness, share the kindness. Thank you.